for tuning into my channel. My name is Janine, also known as J Stella, and today's video is gonna be on breast augmentation, boob jobs, kind of like the before, the middle, the after. My perspective as somebody who's had them now in for six years versus the perspective of my friends who were so gracious enough to help me out and give me a couple of the questions that they had that are a little bit personal, but also factual. So I'm gonna get right into that, but I just wanted to say a quick thank you to the people that are returning to my channel. Thank you guys, and if you're here for the first time, welcome. So just a little background, I am from the bright and sunny Miami, Florida, and I can tell you that, that most girls that I know down there have had a breast augmentation, so it's like going to the candy store, like it's nothing different. But I wanted to get into it because I was a 21 year old who had gone through lots of fluctuations in weight. My breast had gone from being a little larger to just like deflating to getting larger again and just like staying like really sad. And to me, it kind of affected my confidence and I wanted to really feel better. So I figured, you know what, let me save up as much as I can. With this time that I have saving up, let me actually do my research, do my due diligence. So I'm gonna just walk you guys through that process of how I found my doctor and um, kind of just go from there. So before we get any further into that, I just wanna say if you have any kind of judgments or any reservations, please leave them at the door. Please exit the video if you're like totally against plastic surgery. If it's not for you, just don't watch it. But for the people that do wanna get it done or have gotten it done, hey, hey, it's a personal decision, so go for it. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick screen sharing tutorial on how I did my research and finding the right doctor well part of it um but one of the things that i look for is are they board certified um are they board certified in plastic surgery because they can just be certified in surgery and on that um, on that state website it literally shows you where they went to school when they graduated if they've had any pending lawsuits any public complaints or discipline cases and a lot of times you can even request to have those cases sent to you so you can see why did this doctor get sued so keep that in mind obviously when you're going into your consultation I would say go to a minimum of three uh, so you have the a, a good understanding of that ask them as many questions as you have so really quickly, I just walked through the Google internet, searched up Florida medical license search, found the doctor that I wanted to search, nobody in specific. And then you can see that it's really easy to find their profile. And on these state profiles, it shows if they've ever had any disciplines, any lawsuits, you can see where they went to school, you can see if they're board certified, if their license is active, all super important stuff when you're making your search. So I'll put all the links down below. Don't expect them to be like warm and fuzzy. They see hundreds of you like a week. And I promise you, I felt like, man, these guys are so cold. Like they're not really nice. But at the end of the day, when you're doing your due diligence and you're searching up online and seeing their work and bringing in those pictures of what you want your boobs to look like, and you know that they can deliver because of the work that they've done, you, that that whole personality com compatibility shouldn't be your number one thing i kind of got the whole like i'm over it but i'm arrogant because i know what i'm doing so just get scheduled that's kind of like what i got from a couple of them but it's nothing to take personal how much do the boobs cost so depending on where you live obviously that matters miami is very very saturated with plastic surgeons so the prices are not as expensive as i've seen in other places for my breast, I did go with saline implants. They were $3,600 versus the silicone, which were $4,600. So a thousand dollar difference. That was in Miami. However, I've heard in Orlando, cause that's where I'm currently at, it's about 5,500. So uh, for the silicone and 4,500 for the saline. So the price is a little bit more, but I've heard it up here in Orlando as far as even $8,000 for a breast augmentation. So again, keep in mind wherever you are, that will vary and also the kind of implant that you get, which leads me into the kind of implant that you choose to get. Do you want saline or do you want silicone? I went with saline because at the time when you were 21 and um, if you were under 21 or 21 and younger, you could not have silicone breast implants put in unless your surgery was marked as a reconstructive surgery. For me, this is totally elective. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just get the saline ones. Mentally at that time, I was like, yeah, they're just cheaper and it works out. But I will tell you, if I can go back in time, I would have waited a little bit longer and I would have gone with the silicone one. Why? Because of how they feel. If you've ever been to the hospital, which most of us have, you see those little um, IV bags with the clear fluids and like you feel them and it's just like watery. That is literally what the implant feels like. And I can tell you from, pers from my personal life that the first time my husband then boyfriend felt them, he was like, yeah, it kind of feels like you have a bag in there like towards the bottom. So keep that in mind. It's not gonna feel 100% natural. 
versus women that I know that have had the silicone ones, it has a, it's a little bit more firmer to touch. It doesn't feel like a water bag, I guess. So the, the feeling is what's different. Now the inside, obviously silicone has silicone in it and other kind of chemicals. And the saline one is sterile salt water. So if you know one was to rupture, the saline would be a little bit safer versus a silicone one that, you know, it's silicone in your body, which can potentially be hazardous. So it's totally a personal decision, but it's something that you guys should know. So another question that I had from a friend was, do you like your size? Should you have gone bigger or smaller? I will say um, my implant was 330 cc's. To most people, that is really small. And I wanted them to be natural looking. I told my doctor, I don't want boobs that are like up to here. And I don't want these big old things because I'm a heavy set girl, or not a heavy set girl, but like I'm a thick bone girl. So I didn't want them to like make me look even heavier. I just wanted something to help fill out my shirts. So I'm okay with the size. However, I probably should have done like 375. So if I go back, I will definitely go a little bit larger. Even the day of the surgery, the physician asked me, he's like, I brought in other sizes. Are you sure you want the smaller one? And I was like, yes, give me the smaller one because I was so scared of looking fat, honestly. I was so scared of like having these big, big things and like it making me look a lot bigger than what I already, you know, than what I was. So another thing you're gonna do with when you're figuring out your size, go, you're gonna look at so many boobs online, like obsessively, save pictures of what you like. Save pictures of like, you know, the, the boobs because that's if that's what you're looking for go to your doctor with that because my definition of natural may not have been his definition of, or her definition of natural so you want to make sure that what you're saying there's a visual to it so you know either like your definition of natural may be like porn star boobs to them so find your happy medium bring a picture another question that was um presented was what technique did they use to place the implant so for me we decided with under the nipple um, I decided on that just because I didn't want that underscar boob. I figured I might as well have it in the nipple. Um, but I, I do know that they do under the breast, they do through the armpit, they do through the nipple, and they do through the belly button. Now I will say, from the surgeries that I've seen of girls that I know that have had it through the belly button and through the armpit, they don't look as good. I don't know why. Maybe it was just like it was. It was three girls that I know because they're quick to show you. They're like, yeah, I got them done. Truly, truly, like it looked like. A big hand was here and like a breast was here and a breast was here. It was like, Burp. and it was on all three of them that I saw because I contemplated. I was like, oh, I don't want a scar or I was afraid, afraid that I would lose sensation in my nipples. It's a personal decision. We decided to under the nipple. And another thing, you know, how do you heal? If you're a person that scars easily or that gets keloids or that, you know, your, your scars tend to darken, think about that because that is most likely how the rest of your body will heal. You can try, you can try to prevent it with bio oil or Mederma, which are anti like scarring creams that help kind of like fade it out. But if you're a person that has issues with like anything in the past, like even on your face with like pimples, think of how you healed then. And that is most likely how these girls will heal. I am a person who heals really well, so you don't even see it. It looks like nothing ever happened. So lucky for me, that was the case, but I know of other girls who literally have like, like dark, dark rings around their nipples. So you just don't know. You don't know how your body's gonna react. Another thing, like I mentioned, I, I was scared of not having sensation in my nipples after because obviously like they're cutting through, like what if they hit all the nerves and like you don't feel that anymore. I have no issues, lucky for me. Like after the surgery, the doctor was literally like flicking at my nips and I felt everything and ever since then, everything's been good. I don't know of anybody who has lost sensation. I'm pretty sure maybe if you've had like a lot, a lot of surgery um there maybe you would but for me luckily that wasn't the case but it's a possibility the so next one how are your nipples after all this time okay that's actually kind of funny you know you're putting in this implant it's stretching out your skin so you can expect for them to go to get a little bit larger now they're not gonna go from like one to like this but they will expand with the implant you know so that is to be expected and like i said i don't have any scarring but for other people they may and sometimes as i've heard with other girls one nipple may get a little bit bigger and the other one may get be stay a different size so that's something that can happen did the implant you pick harden over time or not thank god it did not harden over time because i have heard that um someone women get what is called capsule capsular contracture which basically means like the implant 
and the skin like kind of has like a fight with each other and then it just builds up this whole entire scar tissue around the breast and it causes the implant to like stay stay up because of that tissue that scar tissue that's now healed made it heal this way so one boob will be up here the other one will be down there and it just does not look good and that does have to be surgically fixed can that happen to anybody absolutely so it's something to to think about that could possibly happen but give yourself like a solid six months like if you notice that one boob is here one is a little bit lower during that healing process that's totally natural they will eventually gravitate because gravity does its thing no matter what even if they're done or not they will eventually drop and be normal because i remember somebody i knew had them done and one was like higher than the other and she was like what the fuck you know what am i gonna do and i'm just like give it time like you're literally two weeks out of surgery like they will fall into place so think about that um the next one can you breastfeed i don't have kids but i do know people that do have kids and who have had breast implants and they breastfeed just fine so um i guess i'll find out <laughs> as far as recovery time goes um i would say give yourself a week like a week to start doing like normal things you're gonna buy a ton of button ups you're gonna buy front clasping bras so that you don't have to lift up your arms because you don't want to do that within that first week um as far as doing like rigid rigid exercising the doctor told me three months so three months is what I took um, to finally get into maybe like doing some arms, doing some push-ups. When you do get a breast augmentation, it's not your one time and done. You have to go back every 10 to 15 years to get them replaced. It's like getting a new car or, you know, getting a new, a new pair of glasses. I don't know, but you do have to go back. So what do you look for in a good plastic surgeon? Are they board certified in surgery? Are they board certified in plastic surgery? You can have a doctor in, in cardiovascular, performing a breast augmentation and they are not the same. You want somebody that specializes in what they're doing because you want to make sure that that person has practice enough to, to do what they need to do to make you look aesthetically symmetrical and aesthetically well. Um, I Again, um, as I showed you guys in the beginning, I make sure that they haven't had any complaints. I make sure that they are, you know, their medical license is active. Or that, you know, is this an osteopathic surgeon or a plastic surgeon? You don't want one doing the other. That is how you get a case on you, doctors. And the doctor that does recommend that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to them. That's a little scary. How long is the procedure? It does last about one to three hours. For me, it was on the longer end. My physician told me um, that I was there for three hours because of the fact that under my right breast, he had issues getting under the muscle. So he had to diligently and take his time working at it so he wouldn't hurt me too much to get the implant under the muscle. Now that's another thing. When you're going in for your surgery, you can choose to have them over the muscle or under the muscle. Most physicians will tell you, hey, get them under the muscle if you want them to look more natural and with time they will set a lot better versus if you do them over the skin. So I have a really funny story for you. The morning of my surgery, I was ready to go, nervous as heck. And you know, I, I was like, all right, today's the day. 7.30 in the morning, I think um, he chose to have his done in the hospital versus in suite, which is another thing, like when you're deciding on who your doctor's gonna be, some doctors choose to have it in the hospital. Some doctors actually have like a full, full surgical suite in their um, offices. So my doctor had it in the hospital. Um, I I thought that was better because I was like, oh my God, if something happens to me, like there's like all the people that you need, you don't have to be transported anywhere. Like that's how my mental, <laughs> how my mentality was. Um, which I think is fine, whatever. But that morning, you're so they roll me into the surgical bay where there's 10 or 12 other people, and it's like a rectangular room. So you're separated by these little thin curtains, but you can literally see everybody in front of you. So I'm hearing and seeing everything. Guy over here is like a Jehovah Witness saying, you know, don't give me a blood transfusion. The one over here is saying, signing a paper for do not resuscitate, saying if he dies under surgery or under whatever, do not try to like relive him. And you know, the other one was over here getting his leg amputated. And I'm just like hearing all of this and I start panicking, like freaking out, like, like what? Why am I doing this? I'm an idiot. I'm here for freaking boobs. Like I was like, ugh, what am I doing? And what felt like every minute a different person would come and ask me what's your name what's your date of birth what's your name what's your date of birth and i'm like full-fledged crying because you don't have family there you're now there by yourself so, so one of the nurses she was so gracious she was like honey i'll give you some like anxiety meds i know you're freaking out right now um but you're about to you're about to get rolled in and i promise you so they started rolling me i counted down to five and i woke up again after like the surgery was done and i started crying again after i woke up <laughs> so anyway that's my story I hope that I answered everything 
or you know helped you guys in this decision process just know that this is a voluntary surgery it's a serious surgery i know it just sounds like you're like a boob job but at the end of the day you need to make the best educated decision for your body for yourself um, because you're volunteering to do this so you want to make sure that you make the best decision um, i really hope this video was helpful and if i missed something please drop a comment i will get back to you you guys know that i write back to everybody and um don't forget to give me a thumbs up a like subscribe and i will See you guys next week. Bye-bye.